I was recently going through some old letters that I found in a box. We've just moved into a new house and I was doing some more decluttering. And I sort of got a bit settled in and actually got myself a cup of tea and I started reading these letters. Now, these were letters that I'd received from my mum. So I'm in Australia and she's back in New Zealand. And every single letter she wrote to me had a theme because I'd written to her and she was responding. And it was all about my busyness. I am so busy, 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 busy doing with the kids, busy doing the house, busy doing the garden, busy working, just a real busyness theme. And that actually has been my theme for a really large part of my life, um, is that busyness. And it's interesting that that busyness hasn't really got me anywhere. That busyness has created a lot of distress, a lot of burnout, and a lot of inner turmoil and a lot of pain. That busyness has really sabotaged a good part of quality time for myself. So does any of this, do you relate to any of this? You know, I am a high achiever, probably like you, there are a lot of us. And when we high achieve, we have this busyness energy, which is great because we get things done. You know, have you heard that expression? If you ever want to get anything done, ask a busy person. But I think the instrumental component of this is how to keep it balanced. And that is what I have spent decades trying to manage and harness and really equip myself with the, I suppose, the tools, the strategies, the navigation, whatever you, whatever wording you want to freaking call it. Because when I get out of balance, I then drop into the overachieving and I become really obsessive. I almost become like trance-like. And so I've had to learn ways to begin noticing. I've got my not negotiable, so I'm about to walk out the door. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, 3.30, not negotiable, I'm out of here. Not negotiable, uh, getting to bed at my certain time, uh, my amount of alcohol, how much exercise, how much I connect inwardly, emotionally. So there's three areas that I really wanna touch on. The first is, I think I've already covered it, that constant busyness. Now this is a sabotage and you've got to be aware of it. And look, I work with a lot of really uh, busy people. They've got businesses, staff, they're leaders, um, often people in your own business. Uh, you, you're full on, you've got a lot going on, but you actually don't make any time for yourself. And look, the danger period of that is your sense of self, your sense of identity, your sense of worth is outside of yourself. Um, and it's often providing for your family, it's providing um, beautiful things for your family, but it's all outside of you. I cannot tell you how many times I have worked particularly with men who their whole sense of identity is just, they're actually questioning who they are and what they're doing here. Because their whole sense of self, their whole identity has been built on providing. And when the relationship is starting to break down or it has broken down, they actually don't know who they are anymore. And the work for them is to create an identity not outside of themselves, but within themselves, you know, often chasing the outer wealth, where I believe the real wealth is the inner wealth and being able to uh, blossom and grow and prosper from that and your own sense of self, your own identity. So that's the first point I want to make. Neglecting personal needs is another really uh, big area that I see. The, the idea that you should actually put yourself first and to give yourself what you need. We're, we're all different, you know, for some people it's going fishing, cycling, motorbike riding, journaling, meditation, yoga. 
uh, cooking, it doesn't really matter. But what is your um, thing that you give to yourself that fills you up? You've got to have this awareness about yourself. Otherwise, you just keep giving from an empty cup, uh, which is not a great place to be in. The lastly is the burnout. So this is the regular breaking down, the regular falling in a heap. Uh, I hear this a lot. It's that push and drop, push and drop. And look, I did that right through my 40s. I freaking get it. But it's just not that easy to be able to unhook from that. And it's learning how to do that. It's being able to trust the process in how you actually do that. A lot of it is coming back to that awareness and the different steps and ways that you need to be able to get out of the head and get into the body. You know, our, our, our brain freaking bosses us around and it's the stories that we've got going on in our head that then creates the emotional um, triggering and the emotional part. So it's having that awareness, but you've got to be slow enough and still enough to actually notice that. So I've really sort of brushed on the overwhelm and the obsessiveness of the overachiever. But the key is, is to stay aligned and come from that high achieving place. So look, I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time.